All right, let's dive into the wonderful day of a mental patient. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That sounds terrible, but it, it's accurate. It's And welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be explaining to you the daily schedule of a patient in a mental hospital. If you're new to my channel, welcome. It's so great to have you here. My name is Devin and I make videos about all things mental health and chronic illness. If you're a returning viewer, you know that I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Please make sure if you haven't already to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I did want to note a few things before I started. One, they're landscaping outside of my apartment today, so I'm sorry if you hear anything. And two, now this is the schedule that I remember following. I can't say I got it 100% accurate. It has been a few years since I was in this mental hospital, but this is the schedule that I remember following. And between my memory and the little bit of research that I could do online, I believe this is pretty accurate. A little bit about the hospital that I went to, it was a short-term psychiatric facility. People tended to go there if they were psychotic, suicidal, or homicidal. Those were really the three things that got you in there and you were evaluated, your meds maybe changed, and then you left. Most people weren't at this facility for an extended period of time. I was also in an adult unit, which means that I was with people ages 18 all the way up probably into their 60s and 70s, and it was any adult with a mental illness that did not also have a substance abuse problem. So we had people ranging from depression to schizophrenia, very different mental illnesses, but we all kind of had to follow this same schedule every day. One last note is that all mental hospitals are different. There are different types of mental hospitals for different things. We have long-term facilities, short-term facilities, but even in those short-term facilities or those long-term facilities, you're gonna have differences in your daily schedules based on where you are. So this was the schedule that I had to follow. This seems to be a general schedule that most people follow in short-term psychiatric facilities, but there are obviously going to be differences based on the hospital that you or your loved one is at. All right, let's dive into the day of being a patient in a mental hospital. Usually wake up is around eight o'clock in the morning. Now you don't have to get up that early. I never got up that early, ever. But wake up is around eight and that's also around the time they send you for breakfast. If you don't get up in time for breakfast or if the doctor has not cleared you to leave the unit because the psychiatrist has to clear a person before they are able to leave the unit and go to the cafeteria or go to different activities that I'll talk about later. So if a person either oversleeps or doesn't wake up early enough to go to breakfast or if they're not allowed to leave the unit, then the workers will bring your food back and you have that food when you wake up. Although usually by the time I woke up, it was cold. The mornings are definitely a little on the busy side. The first thing you do when you wake up is one of the nurses or one of the people who work at the hospital takes your vitals. They take your temperature, they take your blood pressure, and I believe they get your weight, but I'm not 100% certain on that. So every morning your vitals are checked to make sure that you're doing okay, to make sure you're not having any physical reactions to your medications, those sorts of things. And it's every morning. If they see you walk out and you haven't gotten your vitals yet, they go, Devin, vitals, and they'll just yell at you until you go and do it. It's, it's annoying, but it has to get done. After the group is brought back from the cafeteria from breakfast, or people just start waking up because I was never up early enough to go to breakfast. I think in the two weeks I was there, I maybe went to breakfast one time because I just, I was not waking up that early. But after people eat, then it is time for medications. You have medications in the psychiatric hospital about three times a day. And then there also is always a nurse there if you need a medication that is PRN which means as needed. So if you have like an anxiety attack and you have a medication for that, you can go to the nurse. Or if you have a headache and you need to go get Advil, you can go to the nurse. So the nurse is almost always there, but you have like three specific medication times throughout the day. And the first one is right after breakfast with morning meds. Everybody lines up at the window and you take your meds and you get your water and you go. And it's, it's simple. Most people take their meds without a problem. There were a few people that didn't want to take their meds, but I was a patient and wasn't a worker, so I didn't really have to deal with that. 
Around 10 a.m., the groups for the day started, and we always had the same opening group. We had everybody in the unit get together in the common area. Now, our unit was set up. We had a common area, and then there was a hallway with all of the rooms. Our unit was a co-ed unit, but you did not have co-ed rooms. So males had male roommates, females had female roommates. We did have doors that would close, but you were not allowed in other people's rooms. So if you were gonna hang out with anybody besides your roommate, you had to be out in the common area. So every morning at about 10 a.m., we would have a big group meeting in the common area. We would go around the room one by one and we would set a goal for the day and we would rate our moods on a scale of one to 10. And it really was just starting our brains off on a growth mindset, on a therapy mindset. What am I going to accomplish today? How am I feeling today? Is it better than I was feeling yesterday? Kind of keeping track of your moods over time and keeping track of what you should be accomplishing or what you want to accomplish in this time in the hospital. After that opening morning group, we had about a 10, 15 minute break-ish normally before we had recreational therapy. And the recreational therapist was the only actual therapist that I talked to the entire time I was in this mental hospital. The majority of people that you interact with are mental health staff, they're not therapists. So it was very cool to be able to interact with our recreational therapist. But we had our first recreational therapy group after that morning group. And again, if you were not cleared to leave the unit, you weren't allowed to go and you had to stay on the unit. I got cleared to leave the unit right after I saw the doctor, which was about a day or two after I got to the hospital. So starting after that, I was able to leave the unit and go to all these different therapy exercises or activities. That morning recreational therapy session was usually us going to the gym. And it really looked like a school gym. There were some basketball hoops, there was a stage, and we just listened to music and danced and played ball and sometimes we had jump rope. It was it was like a gym class, like a middle school, elementary school gym class and we just all hung out and had fun. And I can tell you I am terrible at basketball but I played more basketball in those few weeks than I ever have in my entire life. It's just, it was a really good way to get us up and active and interacting with each other and just having fun and exerting that physical energy because when I was in the hospital, it was freezing outside. We were in the middle of a blizzard. Nobody was allowed to leave. Like we could not even go outside because the snow was too much. Not that they really are supposed to let you just go outside and roam freely, but they do have some outdoor areas that are like courtyards that are still obviously locked in everywhere, but we couldn't even go out there because it was way too cold. So we had to go to this gym and that was our way of getting our physical exercise and just having fun and letting loose. And we were in there normally for about an hour and a half-ish up until we had to go to lunch. Lunch is ran the same way as breakfast, except almost everybody's awake at that point. So everybody who is allowed to leave the unit then goes to the cafeteria, gets their food, sits in the cafeteria and eats their lunch, and then is brought back to the unit when they're done. Those who are not allowed to leave the unit have their food brought back to them on the unit and they eat there and they wait for us to come back. After lunch, it's time for another round of meds. Again, everybody lines up at the window and you get two little cups. You get a cup of meds and you get a cup of water and you take them, throw them out and you go back to your seat. We then would again have some free time and during any of this free time, the phones were open. So free time, you could call back home, call your friends and family, they could call you. There was also a TV that we could watch. There were a bunch of games and puzzles. We played cards, we colored a lot. There was a lot more free time than this schedule would probably like suggest because not all of the groups were done all of the time. Sometimes groups ended early, groups were scheduled for like an hour and a half, but if you finish in 20 minutes, you then have over an hour of free time. So there was a lot more free time than this really suggests, than this would really tell you. So everybody has eaten lunch and they've gotten their afternoon meds. There's a little bit of free time. People call their families, people hanging out, watching TV, doing whatever. Then you have an on-unit group where everybody is together. And this is when you're supposed to be working on therapeutic skills. You could be working on social skills, coping skills. There's so many different group therapy activities that you can do during this time to help people. You're really supposed to be giving the people in the hospital the skills that they need to survive on the outside. So you help them, again, with social skills. How do you talk to people? 
emotional scales. How do you talk about your emotions and how you're feeling? I know that I actually, with a couple of the other people, ran a group one time and we talked about our biggest accomplishments, our biggest goals and our biggest fears and just talking about all of those things and just getting a new perspective on our lives and on ourselves. And that's what this time is supposed to be. It's supposed to be skill learning. It's supposed to be getting a new perspective and talking to each other. It was not always that. Quite often I would look at the people and be like, aren't we doing group? And they said, we're watching TV, that is group. There was definitely a big difference between the employees that cared and wanted to help and the employees that were just, I think, jaded. But anyways, after we had lunch and our meds, we were supposed to have this on unit group where we all come together and work on our skills and work on our mental health. After the on unit group, again, we get a little break, a little bit of free time, and then we have recreational therapy again. The recreational therapist comes back to get all of the people who are allowed off of the unit and we went to the recreational therapy room. In this room, there was a ping pong table, lots of arts and crafts supplies. So we did a lot of like making bracelets and those sorts of things, painting, all of that type of stuff was in there. They had exercise equipment, like there was a treadmill, I believe. There was a random massage chair. So there was just like a lot of stuff to do in this room. Most of the time, me and my friends sat and made things. I have so many bracelets from being in the mental hospital and I love all of them because we just sat there and made bracelets for each other for hours. But it was again, a way for us to work with our hands and get out of our heads. And a recreational therapist's job is to really give us therapeutic skills and like techniques through recreation and through doing things. And that's what he did. Our morning recreation groups were in the gym and our evening afternoon recreation groups were in the rec room where again you had all of these craft supplies and ping pong table exercise equipment you could really do whatever you wanted some people just sat there and talked but it was nice to get a change of pace a change of environment a change of scenery after that recreational therapy group is done we then went to dinner Again, those who are allowed to go to the cafeteria and get food. Those who can't leave the unit are brought food to them. And I'm not gonna lie, the food there was bomb. I loved the food at the hospital I was at and I was actually kind of disappointed when I left because it was really nice to have three free meals a day. Well, not free, insurance ended up paying for it. But three meals a day of like actual nutrients. Like it's the school lunches that you wish you would have had. It was great, I loved it but it would be around 5, 6 p.m. ish when we would go to dinner and we would be there and we'd eat and we'd hang out and then we would go back to the unit. After dinner, we would go back to the unit and just kind of wait around until it was time for visitors. Visiting hour on the weekdays was from 7 to 8 p.m. And for people who were allowed off of the unit, you had your visits in the cafeteria. For people who were not allowed off the unit, your visitors were brought to you and you just kind of visited in your room. And I was very, very lucky. I think there maybe was one day that I did not have a visitor, but almost every single day I had somebody coming up to see me and I got to spend that entire hour just talking with them. And when you have visitors, they're allowed to bring you things from home so they could bring me clothes or pictures or things to do like coloring books and journals. But they could also bring me food that I wasn't allowed to get. So like the first night I was in there, Jake brought me McDonald's because that was all I wanted. It was nice to have that normal interaction and for them to be able to bring you things and just kind of talk to your family members. But it was also really cool to be able to meet the family members of my friends that I made while I was in the hospital. Like you get to meet the family members that are here supporting your friends, all the different patients. And that was a really cool thing too. Visiting hour ends strictly at eight o'clock. And then after that, you have about an hour, hour and a half of free time before we have our closing group for the day. Most people would take this time to shower, settle down, get ready for bed. Then around 9, 9.30, we would have our closing group for the day. We would again go around, rate our moods, say if they had gotten better or worse, kind of summarize our day and talk about if we had met our goals for that day. This closing group was normally a pretty quick wrap up session for everybody because by the time we got to 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, everybody was exhausted. 
after that nighttime group, it was time for everybody to go and line up so that way we could take our nighttime meds. And the majority of the people in there were on sleeping medications and that's when you would get your sleeping meds. So not long after that, not long after nighttime meds, almost everybody was in bed. Lights out was technically, I believe at 11. They did let us stay up later when I was there on New Year's. But lights out was supposed to be at 11 o'clock, which meant that at 11, they turned off the TV in the common room. They turned off all the lights in the common room. You weren't supposed to be out there hanging out. You could stay up if you wanted to, but you were encouraged to go to bed and go lay down. That is one thing that is a little more flexible than I thought. I really thought that they were going to make you get up and go to bed at a certain time, do all of these things at a certain time, but they don't. They really don't force you to do anything. They encourage you. They will try to get you to participate in groups, but really, if you want to sit in your room the entire time, you can, and they are not going to do anything about it. It's really up to you, and the participation that you do is up to you, and that was really nice. I thought that it was going to be like I don't know, more like prison, more like you do this at this time and this at this time and this at this time and you have to do it. And it was much more relaxed and laid back than I expected it to be. And that was what a typical day in a mental hospital was like for me. That was what my daily schedule looked like. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Your support and love means absolutely everything to me. This is the part where I tell you that if you enjoyed this video to please smash that like button for me, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. If you have any questions or comments on anything I said today, or you have an idea for something you'd like to see me cover in the future, just leave it on down below and I will definitely get to it. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that you all have been able to stay safe and stay sane in this crazy time and I'll see you next time.